April 23, 2024. This is the S&P 500 eFutures Mini on the NinjaTrader 8 platform, 2002 chart. I just want to say that there was only one time economic data came out, which was around 6.45, any real economic data that would move the market, which is about right here. You could see that it kind of caused a spike, but I wouldn't say that it caused this rally because this rally has already been in play since the pre-market and it just continued forward. Overall market structure looked like it was a rally, a big strong leg with you know sub smaller legs inside, but clearly one big leg up, which is this purple channel, then into a range, a small little bump up, and then another range. You could say that potentially it was part of a larger range here, like this, where my blue box is capturing. But I divided it into two ranges because it just seemed like there was a little bit more, I guess, um, price looked like it fit a little bit better this way. Overall, there weren't that many trades today. The volume was a little lower, lower than yesterday for sure, but the total number of trade setups were very, weren't too many. Also trading, I found a little bit challenging today. It was a little more tricky. I took a total of three trades. I lost on two and won on one. At that point, I decided that I couldn't trade anymore and just kind of sit out. So there was no further trades taken here. And then there were only a few other setups after, after that, uh, after the trades that I took. And on top of that, the two, three trades that I took, they weren't very good and clean setups. I'll get to it when I, I'll explain it when I get there. Also, initially, I thought maybe the trading range was this blue line going up. I'm going to move this out of the way. So I actually have it locked. Move it out of the way. So I actually thought this was the trading range at one point. So I actually put it like this, and it fit pretty well. Then later, the purple one came in. So I'll bring the purple one in soon as I need to. So, free market, clearly, we're starting to move up. And I'm thinking at this point, okay, I think we're going to have a rally day. Turned out to be correct, but I wasn't 100% sure because you can't tell too, too much from the pre-market. You can only get an idea. But this is a very strong looking rally or a very strong push up. Immediately drew this blue support trend line and this blue top of the channel. The top of the channel could actually have been a little more subjective. It could have been higher up or lower. Nevertheless, I just had it contact at least twice. And since uh, it's going bullish, I was looking more for long trades. So this is the trend line that was more important to me as opposed to up here where you would think it's going to bounce back and take a short, but that would mean you're inherently going counter trend. The market opens. There's a first entry long here. You don't get a second entry long till about here, but this is below the EMA. I don't like this type of setup. It's moved sideways. It comes up and presses against the pre-market highs again. So at this point, I'm still thinking it's going to be a rally, but it could easily turn into a range day. It's pushing twice, but it also it's also making higher lows every time. So it looks like the bulls are starting to take over. Buyers are coming in. So now it finally breaks out. I'm thinking, could there be a potential fail breakout here? There's no clear second entries. Throughout the whole day, you'll notice the price action today, especially there was, there were like second, third, fourth entries. They weren't very clean. A lot of the price action was very noisy. That partly made it challenging because I felt like there were times where the price action would fake you out. On top of that, this uh, later in the day, the candles printed much slower. It, whenever it prints much slower, there's always a, I guess in my case, or probably a lot of traders' cases, anxiety, because you're going to be sitting in a trade for quite a while, second guessing it whether your setup's correct or not. And prices continue moving up. So it hits this, and that's where I establish the top of my channel, because originally I was thinking maybe it's slightly higher right here, but then that wouldn't have a touch here, and you could still bring it down to about here, and you still have three touches. So I'm thinking, okay, we're clearly in a trading range. I'm going to wait for prices to come back down to this blue line and look for a long entry. Prices come down. It almost bounces off the EMA. It moves back up. You have a first entry short, second entry short. It's a bad signal bar. It might be ranging here. And it hits the EMA. I'm thinking it might have a bounce off the support, but it doesn't. It breaks through. It comes back down, touches the blue line, and continues up. So here, it's showing very strong respect to this blue channel. So definitely 
I'm having more confidence that this rally is going to take shape. And every time that it comes down to here, I think there's a trade to be taken. Technically, you have a new high here. You have a first entry long pullback. You have a second entry long right here. Now, this is actually a decent trade, I think, but it's also in hindsight after the fact. You have second entry long here. Unfortunately, yeah, I hesitated a bit. I did see this break out of this, and it could make a corresponding push on this side. So this is unfortunately a missed trade that I should have taken, and it would have been worth taking. At the time, though, also, the way I was analyzing it, it's one touch, two touch, three touch. It's really a third touch, maybe a fourth touch confirmation, but I essentially hesitated and I was sleeping at the wheel, so I missed this trade. A higher low here. It also could be a first entry short. Technically a second entry short, but this isn't a good signal bar. Once this one forms, I decided not to chase this, although there is enough room to scalp out. This is actually where I take my first trade, though. So after missing this one, then deciding and hesitating and missing this one, I saw first entry long, pull back second entry long. It's coming back down. It It's subjective depending on how you drew the trend line going up, but I've decided that this is a bounce, but this is a bad signal bar. So this was more of a hunch trade, and I decided it was a bounce off this trend line. This following bar pushed up strongly like a bull, a bull bar, but <clears throat> the problem here is there's no real setup. The setup has already left. So it's like a first entry long, second entry long, third entry long. There's no third entry long correct setup here. So I decided, though, that it's pushing back up. I was thinking it's in this trading range. It broke out the bottom, broke out the top. There's no reason to take this trade, but except off the hunch that I think this is such a strong bull bar, there's enough for a scalp. So I entered above the original well, what I would call the signal bar here, and hoping that it's going to push up at least one point. Kind of cr uh, creates two candles, then flushes down and takes me out. So this is a no reason trade that should have been, uh, should have entered. But it breaks past this blue channel. It starts floating up, and I do see a new high. It's a first entry long pullback. This is a po possible trade, I think, possible long trade. EMA is clearly holding. It's moving back into this blue trend channel. <clears throat> and it's a possible failed second entry short. Because if you look at from here, it's a first entry short pullback, second entry short. Second entry short hasn't failed yet, but this is a really good, it's kind of like a signal bar, really good signal bar to indicate a failure is coming. It is getting close to the top of the range though, but there's enough room to scalp out. So if you did enter at the highs, or one tick above, you would have gotten filled here and likely gotten the quick scalp here. If you stayed for longer than a point, or maybe two, most likely you would have gotten stopped out by this candle. So that was rather tricky. It was a quick trade, definitely tricky. So as it moves up, I'm thinking there might be a bigger channel because I noticed it dwelled outside here and dwelled outside here. That's where I ended up drawing this purple channel because it still fit pretty nicely. It had one touch, two touch, three touch, potentially a fourth touch here. So I kind of drew it in. Let's see if I can get it just where I left it before. Something to this effect. So now I'm thinking, okay, there might be a slightly wider channel, a little more shallow. The wider channel still respects the overall uptrend. Let me just delete this blue one to keep it clean. Prices continue moving up bounces so i do a little adjusting to try to make sure you know i don't have an overshoot here even if there's an overshoot it's a small one so i'm kind of tweaking things the top is a little more forgiving you can kind of tweak it a few ways and it still look like i have three good touches but going long the support is more the important line as opposed to the resistance because i don't think i'd be taking a short up here after a very clear clear bullish day Prices move up. You actually don't get a second entry short till about here. It's the first entry short. Here, I'm thinking it moved up. It broke out of this yellow up channel. It didn't quite hit the other side, the purple. But <clears throat> I took this trade in anticipation of a move down because it already tested the highs, which isn't a good idea because after the break, it could make two attempts. So when I saw this close, I'm thinking, 
this prices are actually going to come back down here to the midline or at least to the EMA. And that's not the best uh, reassuring, I guess, judgment call because I don't really have any confirmation. This is, again, pretty close to the hunch trade, but I, I kind of justified it as a first entry short, second entry short. Great, confirm second entry short here. Instead of taking this one, because I needed a confirmation of second entry short, I entered here pretty much a little early. Goes down and it gives me pretty much two points from here to here is two points right before the EMA potential bounce. He yielded a little bit more, bounces around. So here, I saw this as a new high. It's a first entry long pullback, second entry long bounce, push back up. This is in the third trade. I saw it as a higher low. I jumped in before it fully closed, which is risky because before the close, I entered here at the highs not wanting to miss this trade. I should have waited for this to close, confirms the higher low. Then I think what I should have done after this one closed, either watch the next candle, how it starts to form and either jump in at the highs here or jump in at the highs here. But I jumped in early, it flashes up. It looks like if I jumped in slightly at the highs, it would have stopped me out or would have been a losing trade because this ended up being a losing trade. Flashes down and takes me out. So this trade wasn't necessarily the cleanest because it had the break of this green down channel broke up. Now in this smaller time frame or this smaller area, this green channel has a break push up. It does want to test its low. This is the break of this yellow up channel. Now it already retraced so much that you think it maybe wants to touch and bounce off the purple channel because it also broke below the EMA. So this wasn't necessarily the safest higher low to take. And as a result, I kind of got uh, penalized for it. So this is my third trade. So I had a loser off of no reason, not no reason that it lost. The trade entry and justification is a no reason trade. I should have left it alone. There's no reason to enter. I got a win here, but it was early and it was a little bit of anticipation. So it wasn't the best judgment call. And then this one, overall context wasn't the cleanest. It should have been skipped. So it's three trades, one win, two losses. At this point, I, I decided that I'm not in tune with the market. I need to stop trading this because it looks like it's just turning bullish, but it's starting to fail to meet the highs. And I was getting a little hot in my head, kind of getting uh, frustrated. And I knew that like, it's just a recipe for more errors and more invention of trades. So I decided to stop trading. Prices broke out this purple channel. It dwells outside and pushes back in, pushes up. I don't have this blue channel drawn yet, but I do have this orange one breaks out, attempts to make a new high and succeeds, pushes back down. This blue channel, remember this blue range doesn't exist yet. It looks like a very ugly trading range. You do have a new high. It's the first entry long pullback. This is where your second entry long is made. But you don't really have a clean triple test here, and it's just a doji. It's kind of not the most uh, clean setup because you can think, think one leg push back once at one attempt, two attempt. Now I can make a second leg down. So there's a small little range here, but other than being a congestion area that's only two points big, it's not really anything that I felt like there's a trade to be taken here. Pushes back up, so clearly EMA isn't coming into play isn't really acting as support or resistance. So I kind of neglected it at this point. Prices then move up. It breaks out of the screen channel, pushes up, hits here. Now I'm thinking this could be the top of a range and this could be the bottom. First entry long, technically you have a second entry long. Nothing here would have told you to go long though. Flashes up, flashes back down. Technically you have a new low here, first entry short but it creates a double bottom. So the count resets here makes a triple bottom. So it's a triple test here, but this isn't a very clean area. I wouldn't want to take a trade in here anyways, because these candles are really huge. Like one big candle, technically two, one big candle down, one big candle, two big candles down, one big candle. It's just, it's just a little bit messy, too noisy. And then you look at this guy, this is a huge, three and a half point candle, but it did tick above once and then come back down. So if you're following the 
the characteristic here, it's not necessarily trending down. So this green down channel is a little, a little iffy because it could also just be moving sideways. It is making lower highs every time, but it's making the same lows every time. Two dojis, just nothing I really like. Flash it down, continues back down. So this is for me just a kind of stay away zone. And even in hindsight, I I could I think see potentially some trades, but I don't think they would have been safe. And in real time, I I wouldn't have liked seeing this, and I would have likely have just sat on my hands. Prices move back up. The first entry short technically have a second entry short. You could argue the second entry short. Well, this is the signal bar. The second entry short may have been a possible trade because breaking out of this blue trading range was a failed breakout. It did make a new high though. And it's coming back down and engulfed the previous bar. I just didn't like that this signal bar was rather strong. <clears throat> and I would rather have wanted a lower high confirmation. And I want to see prices moving back into this blue trading range. This blue line I drew is just like looks like another support. So I was dabbling with the idea that the trading range could be even bigger up to here. Drops around, breaks out, breaks out of this yellow up channel. First attempt up, second attempt up, and it just kind of gets noisy here. You could find second entries, but then they also turn into third and fourth entries, so it's not something easy. The new high, first entry long, technically have a second entry long here. It's below the EMA though. It also looks like it's breaking back into the trading range, so that gives me pause to go long. Definitely, I'm not just going to say, well, if it's not long, then it's short because it's a little choppy. Plus, if you decided like. You don't think it's going to be long you would go short because you think it's moving back in this type of price action probably would have messed up messed you up or chopped you up new high here is first entry long second entry long but nothing i particularly like and this overall is just not the easiest price action to interpret at least for me prices move up in this orange channel like you have a new low first entry short second entry short this is not a good signal bar to go short on then you can see this moving back up Technically, you have a failure here on the second entry short here, but when you see this in real time, there's too much stem here, and then it does keep moving up. First entry long, second entry long, it's just near the tops, not the easiest trading, not the cleanest trading either. I do see a potential second entry short here. It's a new low. It's a first entry short, second entry short. It doesn't engulf, so it's kind of like an almost setup. I did two legs up after the break, so this orange channel break, first attempt up. First attempt to make a high pullback, second attempt to make a high. It could claim victory and say we made a new high or made a matching high, but it's a little hard to know for sure. But I, I definitely would have left it alone. Prices move down. You have a new high, first entry long. Technically, you have a second entry long here, but you know I did draw this as a potential trading range, but it's not the cleanest because it could have been down here, and this could have been slightly higher. It doesn't quite change the uh, the way you interpret it, but it's just not the cleanest trading range in itself. Price action itself is just noisy. Look like if you did go long here, it would have worked, but I like this next setup better because it's a triple test and it's a second entry short from here. It's a new low, not lower than that one, but at least a localized new low, slower than this guy. So first entry short, pullback. This is a better signal bar and it's a little bit smaller than this guy. Plus, you have a triple test working for you. And if you're thinking you're in a trading range, it looks more, more obvious that you're in a range as opposed to when you're back here. When you're back here, you might be in a trading range. You might still be pushing back down for you know another correction. But here, it looks like for sure in a trading range, you have a triple test, one attempt up, two attempts up, three attempts up. All three attempts ended in a bearish signal bar. So it's it's nice to see that because after this attempt up, this is bearish. And it pushed down. This is also bearish and it pushed down. This is a third test bearish. It looks like it might push down. I'm not too worried about the EMA at this point. It pushes down. So this trade would have worked. And it flows down on this down channel, makes one push up, goes back down. I drew this as a measured leg. And I'm thinking, is it going to bounce here? Unfortunately, even if there is a bounce here, it would just be taking a trade based off the strength of the measured move. And that's just not good enough because it just feels like you're in. Kind of in the middle of nowhere even if you extended this trading range which i don't think is quite in play anymore because the tops is a little iffy 
especially when you're way out here now, because this is a big, you know, fail breakout, which, you know, I don't even constitute, I don't think it constitute as a fail breakout at this point, because it's just broke out, weld outside. Now it's just a new market structure that doesn't quite have that much to do with this price action back here. So I don't think this is going to be respected all that much. Like, oh, it's moving back into the range. But this range itself didn't look that clean, especially when you extend it out to here. I'm moving it back. It kind of bounces. Do you have first entry short? Technically, you have a second entry short. This is an engulfing bar of this terrible signal bar for second entry short. So I would not have been ready to take a short here. Prices then continue chopping. It's a new high. It's a first entry long. Technically, you have a second entry long. This is an inside bar for the signal bar for the second entry long. So I wouldn't have been thinking of going long here. Looks like it's just kind of consolidating in this trading range and it's moving into the last 10 minutes. So, you know, it gets too wild to try to trade this because you can look here. This is 10 minutes and look how many candles have printed. Probably 20 to 25 candles have printed in here in the last 10 minutes. And definitely, I don't want to be stuck in something like that. So then pushes into the close. So overall, it was, it's definitely more of a challenging trading day today because setups look like they formed, but then they immediately would neg negate what you thought was going to happen. And I got bit today, definitely for sure, because, well, all three trades, I cannot say, you know, they were good trades at all. They were just hunch trades, essentially, what comes down to it even the trade that I won. So definitely uh, it was a tougher day. Hopefully things clear up and get a little more obvious, but I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow kind of has something similar, but tomorrow there, there's no real economic data coming out. You have to wait till about Thursday when the GDP and unemployment claims come out. And then probably Friday when the core PCE price index comes out. But yeah, it, was, it wasn't an easy day for me. Hopefully that was helpful.